right, so the project at hand is my 1996 Suzuki King Quad 300. It's not running right now. So it stopped running uh, a few months ago. And that's really annoying because it's, it's handy to have to just pull mowers around or carry stuff around. And it's also a lot of fun to just ride the four wheeler around. And I haven't been able to do that for a while. So the presenting issue is it won't start. And I charged up the battery. It still wouldn't start. I tried choking it. It would like run just barely sometimes and kind of got to the point where it just wouldn't start at all. So I'm pretty sure we've got a fuel delivery issue. So what I'm gonna do is start tracking down the fuel system and see what I can find out. Um, make sure it's got plenty of fuel in it and um, make sure the fuel is coming out of the tank, get into the pet cock, and get into the carburetor ultimately. Because these things have a somewhat complicated fuel system. So we have a, a vacuum operated pet cock here and um, it basically it's an emergency shutoff so that when the engine's not running the petcock cuts off fuel flow but it also has an override portion if i remember right where you can just just leave it there it's called a, pr a prime selection on the petcock and if you have it there it's not using the vacuum operated portion it's just a uh, free flow for the fuel so we've got the funky vacuum operated petcock which i did replace when i um got this four-wheeler I want to say five years ago just over five years ago then we also have a fuel pump which you can't see but the fuel line comes out of here and goes up somewhere yeah see there's another line coming back down so the fuel pumps buried up somewhere in here um, in the front end and the fuel pump again it runs off a of vacuum so if we don't have enough vacuum it may not pump enough fuel from there, the fuel comes across through here into this filter, which is basically just being used as a splice here, and it goes into the carburetor. So we've got this filter here. I think we already had another filter somewhere else in the line. And I really want to replace all of this fuel line or most of it, and because I don't like this splice right here, because it's right over my exhaust. And I really don't want fuel to leak into my exhaust. Where we're starting today is just trying to get this thing running and um, go from there. There's also other various odds and ends that need to be taken care of on here. Needs a new seat cover, needs an oil change, oil filter, so maybe adjust the clutch slightly. Um, like I said, a new fuel line. Possibly try to repaint the racks on here. Figure out something to do with these back fenders that are messed up or just learn to be okay with it. And um, my front CV axle, one of them needs a new boot. Yeah, that's that. We'll just dive in. Okay, so let's see what it done if I try to start it. My fuel filter over here looks dry. And I actually think that's a good sign because that probably means it's not a carburetor issue. Take it for what it is. I don't like messing with that carburetor. So let's make sure we have this petcock in the right spot. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a mixture of cranking it and seeing what happens and um, disconnecting fuel lines or disconnecting fuel lines and then cranking it to see if fuel will come out. I'll probably start at the petcock and um, work my way downstream. And another quick thing is there sometimes is a filter screen in the bottom of a petcock and that could be clogged up also. So I've got that screen and I've got two other fuel filters and hopefully it's one of those because I don't really want to rebuild the fuel pump. That and sometimes the fuel pump, if it goes bad, that can mean I might don't have enough compression, which could be an engine rebuild, but I really don't think that's what's happened here. So anyway, we will just start going down the list. Okay, so I got the petcock bowl off and um, there's no filter that I can tell. But while we're here, we can check something. So, down is in the on position, or the run position. Here is off, and up is prime, which means fuel should come straight out, which it does. You see that coming out? So we went all the way down on on. Well, let's show you first off. I should crank it, nothing happens. Very little happens. When you put it down on, I should crank it and the fuel should come out. Yeah, the fuel's definitely coming out. So off shouldn't 
maybe I guess that I could see the little coming out, but the main point is that you can leave it on, on and no fuel will come out unless the engine's running. So the petcock is not the culprit. Petcock is working fine. So that means we can continue our journey and keep following the fuel system. So I noticed my fuel filter up here is getting wet and um, this is a lot easier to get to than the fuel pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my lines around the fuel filter right here and see if I'm getting good fuel flow through there. Okay, I've got that disconnected. Let's see if we get some good fuel flow out of this and I start cranking it. That was weird, it started running. But I'm not seeing any fuel come out of this thing. It should be pumping it out of there. Oh, put it a little lower. There we go. Okay, so the fuel filter is now full. Let's put that back in there. Let stuff dry off just a bit, although my gas is away from the exhaust, so it should be fine. It was running there just barely, which is a good sign. Um, I think that's because I had just been cranking it, trying to see if I could get it to start. So there's some fuel that has started working its way down into the carburetor. So now, yeah. See, I just killed it by giving it full gas, which means that full gas is not full gas. It means it's getting more air in than it is gas. Oh well, I hoped it was maybe fixed, but it's not. It's just really a pain to work on the carburetor on these four wheelers. Um, so I'm kind of hoping I don't have to take it out. I mean, it's a several hour job to pull that carburetor out of here. Well, part of it is this air box. Well, I say to pull it out, clean it and put it back in we're probably looking at three hours or so in like 30 minutes of that time is trying to get it to fit back in here got so stinking tight i'm pretty sure it's just the carburetor is gummed up somewhere so anyway we know it's not the petcock we know we've got a new fuel filter in there and we couldn't easily clean it from the top of the carburetor. And we know it's getting some fuel to the carburetor. So, sounds like it's gonna be a carburetor rebuild time. Okay, so, we're back on the Suzuki. I uh, kinda wanna get fixed soon, if possible, like in the next day or two, because we have a snowstorm, ice storm forecast to come in and I uh, really enjoy the opportunity to drive this thing around, ride it in the snow and ice, <laughs> so. Let's see if we can't get this carburetor pulled out of here tonight and then maybe tomorrow um, rebuild it and put it back in. We'll see. Tomorrow might be a little cold though if the front's coming in. So we'll see. This may not work out, but it'd be fun if it did. I've had this out of here more times than I would like to have had it out, but it's been several years since I've had it out, which is good. So to get the carburetor out, you have to take out this box pretty much. I think I have to take the back plastic off, which I did not want to do.
there are the two bolts that I could not get to. So you kind of have to have the plastics off to get to those. Today, I'm gonna to try to get back on the Suzuki King Quad and um, see if I can get the carburetor out and get it fixed. It's much warmer. The snow is all but melted. I don't even know if there's any traces in the yard. But yes, we did get a snowstorm. All gone, pretty much. It didn't work out to get the carburetor fixed before then. So anyway, now is the time to get back into the project. I'm off there. Uh, yes, we did it. Now you can see those hoses a little bit better. We've got this hose here. That's the drain. We've got this hose here, which is hooked to the vacuum system. And we got this hose here, which is also, I don't know, what that hose does. It goes to the crankcase. Maybe it's the vacuum system as well. Got this boot pretty much off of there. Uh, I think that boot is still fine. Just needs a little cleaning up. And there's the carburetor. So now I can disconnect the carburetor and take it straight back and out. So in theory, I just need to get this thing off of the boot. Then all the other stuff should have some flex in it and I can pivot it around. So if I can just pop it out of the boot. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That, there's your carburetor. Whew, that was hard. So basically I'm gonna need to drop the float bowl and clean out that side of it. And try to be careful not to get carb cleaner up here up top because that's where my rubber diaphragm is. These vacuum lines basically just pull off. Whoop, whoop, those are off. Serious. I think I found maybe my problem. My, my jet came out. So this is my main jet here. And there is a screw in the bottom of my, or on the top, down there. There we go, got it. This is what we lost. We lost our main jet. Our main jet is supposed to be screwed in right here. And that came entirely out. Which would definitely make it run a little funky. Now I would have thought it would make it get way more gas. But it made it just run awful. Put that out. I've never seen that happen before. So it's possible we put that back in and it would run fine. But since I'm already here, I'm going to check out my other jets and maybe put a little carb cleaner in here. And uh, <clears throat> to test run it, I may just put it back on the engine and not put the all of the air filter box on there and just give it a quick run to see if it seems any better. But yeah, no, that would definitely make a huge difference having your jet out. I'm just not sure exactly what difference. I thought it would make it run way too rich. It felt like it was running way too lean. You can see our Throttle opens and shuts okay. Now we're kind of at the point where I could throw this back on here and um, give it a test run because we've got our throttle hooked up. Basically then at this point I just need to hook up the vacuums and the fuel, fuel line. We're gonna go ahead and try to fire this up. All right, we are ready for our first attempt to start it now. And um, it should run pretty lean with all that air coming in there. Set starter and see what happens. It's gonna take a little bit for that fuel to get in there. I see a little bit starting to come through. Try again.
I think it's gonna run good once we get the air box back on there. Last time I was working on this, we got it to where it would run. <clears throat> and it seemed like it was running pretty well. Maybe just a little lean, um, because there's no air filter box or air filter there to restrict airflow. So the plan today is to basically get it back into regular operational service <clears throat> so that we can at least use it. And then I'm gonna start gathering up parts and try to do a more thorough fixing. And in this case, I really hope I do it, even though I know sometimes I get something running, it's like, oh, that's good enough. Um, <clears throat> I really do want to replace this fuel line so there's not a fuel filter right here. I want it to be one run all the way through like it used to be. So that's the plan for today. Let's get to it. So now let's see if we can figure out how to put this box back in. So this hose here, this hose here, and there's another hose. You can see right there. That's the end of it. So that's the last hose. You can kind of see how they fit in there. One there, one there, and one there. If anyone's found an amazing way to put these in here, um, feel free to let me know. This is always a pain. This is a pain to get this boot in the right spot. It is not on carburetor right. I got the carburetor and air box all back in and the fenders are just setting on there. And the seat of course just latches in anyway. So we're gonna actually take those off and bolt them back down and then we'll be done with the part one on this project. So basically I just tough those through here and try to get everything fairly loosely on. Make sure everything lines up. So there's a couple spots that may be a little difficult on this rack. Those ones could be a little hard to line up. We got the washer, Phillips head, and a little eight millimeter nut. Just kind of push this plastic around until it lines up. Get that through there. Get that threaded on there. Use this puppy. And this. And I learned you have to be careful. Because if you aren't careful, this happens. So you can, um, Shear those bolts right off, which I've never done before. But I didn't think this thing would really be shearing off bolts, but I guess if they're little ones, you can um, shear them off. So um, I did that twice. That's the part that stinks. Don't choke.
you can see it's running now. Yeah, it's running a little bit better than it did before. So here's the plan. What I did this time in part one was basically just getting it running because um, it was in a non-running state. I think we succeeded in that. So there's a lot I'd like to do to this four-wheeler, but <clears throat> I don't know exactly how much is practical. I need to adjust the valves. That should be uh, straightforward and a good thing to do. Get the oil changed and make sure I'm putting in the correct viscosity oil because I have learned that you need to use a particular type of, not necessarily viscosity, but a particular type of oil for that um, centrifugal clutch. So I'd like to put a new seat cover on there. And my rubber axle boot for the front left axle is cracked and I want to replace that before the joint goes bad. Other than that, it's more things like maybe repainting the rack, um, maybe putting a better battery in there, redoing the fuel line. Yeah, the fuel line is one. I say there's a lot, but there may not be that much. So um, hopefully we can do like a part two to this video. I'd love to replace the back mud flaps, but that may just be a luxury that's not necessary because they're hard to find, they're expensive now. And I'm concerned if I bought another old one that it would be brittle and break as well. So I've been thinking I may make something out of like aluminum, like an old license plate <clears throat> or something like that, that I can, um, it'll be lightweight and durable and maybe uh, use like a floor mat for a vehicle. But basically bend the aluminum license plate out to give us that straight out standoff and then put some rubber on top of it to make it look kind of continuous. The seat foam is in overall decent shape. There's going to be some spots that need a little filling in. But I think a seat cover is going to work out pretty well. Maybe clean up the knobs. Put the hood back on the front. Also, one more thing. I may need to replace the front brake system. Because sometimes it can drag a little bit. And since this is only a 280cc machine, it doesn't have a lot of extra power to spare. So, it's not really good to have the brake dragging. Not that it would be anyway. But yeah, so that's it. I really like this four-wheeler. It's exactly the four-wheeler that I wanted for quite a while. Um, and it's just a great four-wheeler because it has two-wheel drive, it has four-wheel drive, and it has four-wheel drive differential lock. I think we're done with part one on the Suzuki King Quad 300 4x4. Fixing it up, part one, getting it running. We got it running. Let's go ride it. Pretty good now. I'm happy. I just need a little place to 